Yeah, indeed, she's right. I mean, she's one harbinger that listens. I, I saw that uh, the higher the number of the harbinger, the smarter the, that harbinger is and the the better they can listen to reason literally child will just go hand to hand and head on fight senora i won't even talk about uh, about her but the higher you get i, I mean the doctor has a, a lot of power he's so strong and decided to just negotiate with the archon and to just uh, um do a fair trade same with Arlequino. Arlequino I feel like feels like she's so so much smarter than child and I think the wanderer, let's call it Scaramouche, uh and Signora all together. Wonderful. Here it is. Okay, what's your condition? When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Okay. Sounds normal enough. But what do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you to decide. Mm-hmm. We accept your condition. Then we have a deal. Follow me. Let's go. Uh, 600 this way. Is this the place where she killed mother? Why are all these related to that? I, I can't believe it. All of these are so related to the to that thing. It's literally Arlequino's past and it's the first time they did something like this. They revealed a lot of lore just by releasing a short animation and it's all related to her quest so you you'll understand more if you watch that uh that thing what is going on here why is this part what what's here so important that paimon doesn't let me go yeah it's this one see this is the place where she destroyed it Oh, and we didn't even know, we don't even know about her uh, thing. About her curse. What What's place? her curse? Somewhere long forgotten by everyone. It used to be a grand building. Now it's nothing more than a pile of rubble. No one comes here anymore. Nor does anyone care about what once happened here. Although, this place does have something to do with the story I'm about to tell you. <laughs> I know the story. It was before I became a harbinger. And before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth, due to certain events, mm. I first killed Clairvy and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. You should. You were the one that killed Clairvy. You should add more context to this because we know we we know what happened, but Lumine doesn't know, and it's <laughs> you just made another misunderstanding. Hello. Patience now. Allow me to explain Clairvy's side of the story first. I'll start from the beginning. Clairvy was six Whoa. years old when she was brought by her mother, Crucibina, to live in the house of the hearth. From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. A thriving family made up of kind adults and friendly children. Crucibina was the knave at that time, and the house of the hearth was under her control. She was Clairvy's mother by blood, but she was also the mother to all the children in the house. Oh, Clairvy okay. Clairvy was happy here, for a time. But she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all. It was a kind of purgatory. That's why the name of the story quest is that. Exactly. The House of the Hearth takes in war orphans from all over to Vat. But as for how to raise them, that depends entirely on the person in charge. Crucibina came up with a novel idea. She would teach the children to fight. 
force them to duel each other, and then crown as the king of the house the child who proved themselves most worthy of inheriting her title. It's difficult to estimate the number of children who died or were maimed in the process. There's little I can say about the ones who died. The ones that emerged with permanent injuries, on the other hand, well... They still served a purpose. They would be handed over to the doctor to be experimented on. Or sent away on dangerous missions. Nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded. So those were the experiments Clairvy was talking about. But what actually happened to her? You said that Clairvy was Crucibina's daughter, so if Clairvy tried to convince her to stop what she was doing, Crucibina probably would have listened, right? Despite being Clairvy's mother, Crucibina cared little for her daughter. She forced Clairvy to join the House of the Hearth only as a means to demonstrate her own impartiality as a mother. To prove that she treated all her children equally. Clairvy did try to convince her mother to change her ways, but it was to no avail. After her efforts failed, the only other option was to rise up and try to fight back. Unfortunately, the other children had already been thoroughly indoctrinated into the illusion of happiness Crucibina had created. Of course, there was one exception. Someone Clairvy's age who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Peruware. And that was you, Wait, Betty. the friend that Clary mentioned? Friend, huh? I suppose we can call her that for now. Clary was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Peruware, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Her cold-blooded nature allowed her to see through Crucibina's facade. Yet, it was also this cold-bloodedness that prevented her from acting against it. At least at first. While Clairvy longed for freedom, Peruware was convinced that, amid all the fighting and violence, she would make it until the end. Despite their differences, the two became fast friends, united by their knowledge of the truth. Clairvy told Peruware that she hoped to create a real family, where no one would be killed or sacrificed. There may have been a certain naivete to her ideas, but Clairvy proved her determination many times over. She tried countless times to run away, ask for help, or expose the truth. But her efforts only earned her beating after beating. The only thing that kept her going was her strength of will. Even with her body racked with pain, she would still stand on her tiptoes and open the window at night. She and Peruware would look out at the moon together, a fierce longing for freedom shining in her eyes. But one day, that light simply vanished. Oh no. What happened? Her hopelessness resulted from a culmination of things. Ten years had passed. Ten years worth of failure after failure. She and Peruware weren't children anymore, but finding any chance to escape still seemed as hopeless as ever. It was during this time that Peruware suggested a new plan. If escaping was out of the question, why not take down the very person sitting on top of this throne of lies? Mother herself. Clairvy rejected that proposal. She claimed that, as a famous harbinger, Crucibina possessed an unimaginable amount of power. Trying to kill her would have an incredibly low chance of success. Clairvy never gave another reason, but Peruware could see it written all over her face. Clairvy still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she couldn't escape and fight back, then only one option remained. And we all know how that went. Precisely. Death was the only way that she felt she could be free. It happened during a duel. When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner turned out to be none other than Peruere. The very person that had stood by her side all those years. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately, Clairvy decided to let Peruware end her life. 
From that moment on, Peroware's journey was one written in flames. When the rain finally came and washed it all away, there she stood. The sole victor in Mother's endless game of slaughter. A trail of corpses strewn across her path to success. It was the very result she had predicted ten years prior. Even then, she believed she would make it until the end. She wasn't surprised by the fact that she emerged as Mother's undisputed heir. Rather, her success left her with an inexplicable sense of restlessness. She was unsettled. And there was only one thing that could quell that sensation. Perhaps you two would like to take a guess as to what it was? Killing the person at the very top. Who's Sabini, you mean? But... But... Correct. This is the place where Peruware killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. The moment she acted, any conception of what was right or wrong ceased to matter. It's one of the principles of the house. Only those who survive get to write the rules. Peruware won the battle and became a harbinger herself. After which Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairview was talking about... It was you all along. Your Perilware. Arlecchino is just a name you got later. This was your story just as much as Clairview's. I left that name behind long ago. I must say, hearing it now... does bring back memories. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. And that is where the story ends. Any more questions? Yeah, what's with the spirit or the memory remnant that we see in, in the house? Yeah, based on what you just told us, Clairvy wasn't a little kid when she was killed. Oh, and this too, yes. So the Clairvy we met, was she really a spirit at all? Who's messing with us? I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over. Something to do with your curse. And ruin. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. It's not unlike a curse. My flames leave behind shadows of anything they consume. Of course, huh? the chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. Clairvy is a very special case. So, you basically she was did it. Years old. But what emerged from the flames was her six year old self. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. Lose ten years worth, however. And it would be like living in the past. Like returning to a version of yourself that... never grew up. No wonder Paimon got such a weird feeling when we were talking to her. Perhaps I should put it this way. Claire V is someone trapped in time. It may seem like she exists with us in the present, but she truly lives in the confines of her own past. So if all of that is true, then you must have known about Claire V for a long time. Yeah. Indeed. She's a rather... Volatile and unstable entity. Sometimes she would look after the children. She's even saved some of their lives. But other times, she would hide from me and become obsessed with revealing the truth about the house to anyone. Yeah, the who old herself. truth. Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. So, okay, that Your makes sense. To expose Clairvy to sunlight. They failed, 
Yes. The reason is actually quite simple. In Clairvy's mind, the house is impossible to escape. And it is this very perception that traps her there. But... No matter. All I have to do is kill her again, and all will be resolved. I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this How time. How will you do that? Can you touch entities? I mean, I don't know what about your curse, but okay. Paimon, don't get feelings for spirits. Oi. So what if she's trapped in her six-year-old zone? She's still your friend. At least talk to her first. Paimon, she's a shadow of a memory. She's not even real anymore. What are you talking about? That's why a harbinger can listen to reason and this this float. We have a floating entity right here. Uh, hello? No one is, is no one is saying anything about this floating entity here. Hello? It's too late for that. She broke the rules and now she must be punished. That goes for Filial and Nantoy as well. She said quite the effect on them. I hope you understand. The difference between Crucibina and myself lies in our formulation of the rules, not our policy for enforcing them. Upholding the rules without question is a trait we both share. Because that is how a household should be run. Yeah, you realize now. Is this really what you want to do? Oh. Whatever could you mean? Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Why isn't all why, why isn't the whole game like this? Why can't she talk all the time? Whether as a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Well, it appears it's about time to proceed. Before we arrived, I told some of my well-behaved children to bring our troublemakers here by nightfall. Okay. I do believe I've kept my end of the deal. I give your friends quite a bit more time. As for what happens now, we'll just have to wait and see. Here they are, father. Everyone is here. Oh, you gonna execute them? Uh, Seeing something like that would actually be a first for me. You're quite Wait. enthusiastic. You're, you're quite excited for this. How are you here? I'm sorry. I heard about how you helped buy us more time. But I still failed. I couldn't find a way to fulfill her wish. But isn't she... In, wait, she's walking in the shadows? Like, really? Huh? Are you... Perry? Indeed, it's been a while, Clairvy. Perry! Shh, stay right there. I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first, I believe certain scores need settling. Don't tell me Father, someone will intervene. Let me explain. I thought this was Out a cutscene. my way. Father! You chose to conceal a threat to the house. And for that, you must be punished. Overall, however, I suppose your wrongdoing is hardly the most egregious of the bunch. So I'll deal with your punishments later. As for right now, the more pressing concerns are the traitors among us. By traitors? Do you mean us? Father, let me explain. We didn't mean to... Fultz, why don't you share what you heard? Yes, Father. Secret Midnight Meeting Number 3. Uh. Participants, Filial, Nantoy, Sato, Tati. Nantoy clearly said... If only father wasn't the one who took us in. Sato added, I'm sick of this life. I just want to live as a normal person. Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about father. <laughs> I did not. Snitch. You're, what you're is lying. this? Snitch. Fultz is trying to frame us. Mm. It's not like I'm the only one who heard those things. After that, 
You and Toddy and a bunch of other people started talking about Clairvy. You were using all those things Clairvy brought up as an excuse to question Father. We're birds locked in a cage. The only way out is to destroy it. That's what you said, wasn't it? You little... You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you, huh? And you, Sheplo, have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? Come on, let's hear it then. What's your reason for all this? <sighs> You're wrong, Filial. We don't want you to die. You're our family. Liar. You wouldn't be doing this if that were the case. So why? Why have you backed us into a corner? We all live in the House of the Hearth. You know the type of work we do, Filial. A single betrayal can cost dozens of us our lives. It's not like it's never happened before. That kind of thing is hard to forget. That's why the House of the Hearth cannot tolerate any form of betrayal. Ever since we came to Poisson, you've had seven secret meetings. A lot of the things you talked about really crossed the line. You've been spying on us for half a month? Wait a second. Now that I think about it, the move to Poisson was just a way to make it easier to spy on us, wasn't it? Because we were all in one place. You've had this planned all along. Okay. Filial... Nantoy, I'm sorry. I owe you both my life. I owe Claire V too. If it weren't for all your help after I got poisoned, I wouldn't be standing here today. If this were any other situation, I would do anything to repay that kindness, even if it cost me my life. But... <sighs> rules are rules. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. That's enough, Filial. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We broke the rules. Plain and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Shaplo. Fultz. I'm sorry, Father. We... <laughs> accept our punishment. Shaplo. According to the rules of the House of the Hearth, how should these traitors be punished? All those who betray the house pay with their lives. I feel like this is not killing and the so pay with their be. lives. Please wait! Something you want to say, Linny? Please reconsider, Father. What Filial and the others did, does it really count as betrayal? We all come from broken families. From the very first day we joined the House of the Hearth, we wanted nothing more than to make it a real home. But the truth is, none of us know what a real home should look like. I'm not saying I have all the answers. All I know is this. Killing Filial and the others may uphold the rules, but doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family than we've ever been. So please, Father, please reconsider. I agree with Linny. Father, please. I'm again a spectator. Linny, you... <sighs> I also agree with Linny. <sighs> An order once given cannot be rescinded. However, given the extent of your determination, I suppose we shall have to go about this a different way. Uh. Draw your weapons. Um. And face me. Um. Our weapons? Father, are you referring to a duel? Precisely. The rules of the house will not be altered. Traitors must be punished. However, resolving disputes with a duel is also one of our rules, one that also applies to me. 
demonstrate a sufficient showing of strength, and I shall offer a concession. Wait. Beat. Father and She didn't say beat, she said Impossible. show strength. Father is way too strong, even for Lenny. Everyone sees Lenny as big brother, literally all of the house. <laughs> Nice, nice shot. Okay. Did you hear that, traveler? It seems like I don't care. The the knave. What should we do? Can they really win something like that? Uh... The those people from the house are really going to be executed. Hey, are you listening? The the thing she said earlier. Them really watch. Yeah, she. I'm pretty sure when she said that they, they are paying with their lives. I don't think she's killing them. Because I'm pretty sure she's just releasing them or just changing their lives, you know? Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. She never actually answered my question. But that makes the answer pretty obvious, doesn't it? She is not executing them. Looking at that expression on her face, she seems really serious about this. Guess that means there's no chance she's throwing the duel on purpose, huh? There's no way the name will lose on purpose, although... When guests are around, families are often on their best <laughs> And any disputes are less likely to escalate. So I guess I'm into this. When the time comes, make, make the, the choice. choice. Yeah, this most appropriate in the situation, and lend your, your help to, to the, the house of the hearth. I guess we're in. What's wrong, traveler? Hey, where are you going? I'm with them. Traveler. I'm with them. I like to see for myself what the fourth of the Fatui Harbingers can do. Time for a battle. You're asking to join the duel against the knave? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Get excited. I'll allow it. We do have a ready-made dueling ring at our disposal, after all. All I would advise is this. Keep a firm grasp on your weapon and give it your all. Any less. And you may just lose your... So no one's pulling any punches. We're going this seriously. Wait. What team do I have? I think I have my new villain. <laughs> Afraid? Oh. Or do you not even have the courage to be afraid? I'm I'm gonna switch Furina to the healing because I want I want to admire her a bit. I'm listening to the song or Wait, 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 what are those hints? Wait, she's losing health? Why are you losing health? Okay, I mean, I guess I should fight back. Over here. Oh, that's how she's losing health. They're actually helping me. That's that's the actually nice. Oh. Okay, I guess I should be a little serious. I saw. I saw Fremine help me there. With the fall of darkness, the destruction shall rise. Oh, After killing one out, your necessary will unleash. Okay, so I guess healing time. I... A charge attack. A charge attack with Layla. She gave me cryo? <laughs> Where are you? I'm just delaying this because I want to enjoy the fight. Not bad. I don't go all in. Sure. 
Okay, I guess it's it's time to go. Uh, was that? Oh, we have another phase. Whoa! Damn! Those animations! Oh, oh, oh. She was sticking with the name Perwer. And now I'm in a spider's web. And she just attacked head on. Okay. My blade is all that remains. Uh, I don't need actually healing for Nuvillet. He can heal it himself. Okay, let me delay this a bit more. <laughs> Watch out for father's movements. Look out! <laughs> She's dodging. Time to go. Clear the bond of life. Let me put okay, bond of life on Nuvillet. And I did an achievement. Only the beginning. Now's our chance. Are you alright? Over here. They're attacking. Oh. I almost dodged into that. We clear Layla. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm still using a dull blade. better than to crowd in one place oh I know oh nice I'm sorry father <laughs> Sorry for what? This pitiful excuse for an attack. My turn. Come on, Lumin! Made it out, did you? <laughs> You're stronger than I expected. Did she just drag me into a Genjutsu? Strong enough to beat me. Okay, I'm fighting Itachi now. <sighs> I believe we can end things here. <laughs> It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <coughs> Brother, are you alright? Lenny. Given that I am the victor of this duel, as agreed, 
The punishment stands. No! I never thought things would end like this. However, everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Do you still have them? Bottled yes. flames? I wasn't sure what they were for, but I kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then, in just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. Once ingested, searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. No harm will come to you physically, but I knew it! Will be I knew away. it! If you can withstand the pain, when you awake, you'll have forgotten everything you know about the House of the Hearth. And will, and will be expelled, expelled from, the from the organization. That's the same thing that happened to that guy. Administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the house and give you a See? new identity. Her method of, kill, of uh, um, execution is not killing. The young man that I thought looked familiar, the one selling newspaper outside the Palais Memoria, he must have been the same horror we saw on the list of execution. He wasn't killed at all. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Yeah. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. No. If my understanding of the Navy is right, she really thinks of that as killing him. The horror that lives in the heart of her is dead. The one that remains is simply a normal person living out his life with his beloved. Even so, it's much better than actually ending their lives. Yeah. So. I knew it. Letting us go, father. You misunderstand. Memories are extremely important. Once consumed by flame, the version of you standing before me will die, and our secrets will die with you. So no, I don't intend to just let you go. Because the person who survives will be nothing but a stranger. Even so... Even so... I won't have to live in fear anymore. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry I let you down. But I... I really... Don't cry, Filial. You haven't left the house yet, so there are still rules to be followed, yes? Remember what I taught you. Anger makes you impulsive, sorrow causes you to waver. Don't let yourself be controlled by your emotions. Of course. I'll remember. Dry your tears, and go pursue the life you really want. Yes, yes Father. Father. Chaplot, Fultz, Elwar, take them back to Poisson. And bring Linny and the others as well. I prepared three extra vials of bottled flames. As for whether to take them, the choice is yours. Goodbye, children. The next time we meet, I will no longer be your father. Thank you for all you've done for the house. I hope you have bright futures ahead of you. Father! Let's go. Here, grab my arm, Linny. I'll help you walk back. Thank you. Uh, I forgot about the other person. This phantom here. Claire V. Can we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. You really are Perry, 
aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? Or am I dreaming? I mean, that's good reason. Oh, what a long dream. Neither. No. Oh. You died, Claire. She just straight up to her through her face. You could have at least sugarcoated it a little. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would say she's probably had enough lies. Uh, oh, <laughs> straight okay, to her yeah. face. No, you just died. <laughs> that's all. That's it. You accepted it just like that. Paimon, yep. back off. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. Plus, I don't really need to know why I'm like this. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never stopped trying to defy fate. At first, no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the Aurora. So one night, we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything you could think of, but every attempt ended in failure. Still, you never turned your sword on Crucibina. And you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me. For the last 16 years of my life, I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now, I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. I must have been feeling really worn down. But somehow, I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again, I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the House of the Hearth, and as the children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. In return, they will be allowed to live a normal life in Fontaine without being prosecuted for their past. Whoa. Of course, I won't simply hand freedom to them on a silver platter. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom that is earned has true value. This is so funny because last time a Harbinger talked about freedom was when the God of Freedom was punched in the nuts, was actually kicked in the nuts. The Knave, actually Arlecchino, is ages better than Signora. She's literally smarter and more reasonable. And sometimes she's more of a fox, more, more sly than the fox it to the than the fox herself. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, Perry? What's this angle? You're a pretty amazing king, and a really great father, too. 
I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. Perhaps they would be willing to so tell I'm a storyteller what the outside now. world is like. Really? Of course! We've traveled all over the place! We've got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight! Oh my god. Well, since we just talked about freedom... You know, I used to dream of being a bard. Playing the lute while singing into the winds of freedom. <laughs> Even if there was no one there to listen, I would have continued to sing no matter what. Geotime. Ah, that's where Mora comes from. I never knew that before. If so. I had some Mora, I would buy three new dresses. One for me, one for Perry, and one for Mother. <laughs> it's just too bad Perry doesn't like wearing dresses. And Mother? Well, she probably wouldn't accept something like that either. Hey, <laughs> I guess I just have to keep them all for me then. I could wear a different one every day. Alright. Oh, there's... Wait, what is this sign? We'll talk about this, uh, the last one. Um, I love the fact that we're just, like, skip... Because we ju we know this, we're skipping the all the, um... The talking, and just go straight to her point. What do they look like? I once saw a drawing of this one guy with horns on his head and a super scary face. Are there any yokai like that? We have. Oh, well, sounds a like you're talking kitty. about an oni. Yep, we've met one, and that's <laughs> I tell you, they're not nearly as scary as they look. IQ of a rock. All right, Dendro. I was always too afraid to skip Mother's fighting lessons, but at the academia. I bet you could do all sorts of secret things in class. Things that have nothing to do with studying. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Being able to study whatever you want without having to fear for your life actually sounds pretty great. And now, you tell Krabi all about her nation video. Eventually, the conversation returns to Fontaine, the nation she once called the home. The situation was super dangerous. Lenny and Lynette were accused of committing a crime. And they were going to have to stand trial at the Opera Epiclès! Oh no! That must have been hard for all of you. What happened next? Don't worry! We were able to turn the situation around super quickly. Aw, uh, thanks! <laughs> Not you again! I'm on, of course! <laughs> How'd you do that? Come on, tell me! Ahem! <clears throat> okay, so it was like this. After the failed magic show, we rushed to the scene and... There is listen really intending to buy one story about her time in Fontaine. She's really happy. It's like all her troubles have been forgotten. Maybe this is the first time she's ever been able to truly relax, but I'm not sure how long this moment can last. I mean, she has to. Shadows go. don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Oh yeah. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. So why are are we telling her this? At that point, I should probably forget everything we've told her and go back to being the skeleton girl who could only hide in the shadows. I was too busy thinking, I almost didn't notice the sun has risen. Did we chat all night? Clairvy, huh? you've worked tirelessly from the shadows to overthrow the House of the Hearth. Now, by my authority as the knave, I shall announce how this matter ends. You are hereby expelled from the House of the Hearth. You are no longer tied to this place, nor are you bound by its rules. <sighs> You're saying that I can finally leave? I get to experience the outside world as well? <sighs> oh, I almost forgot. There's no getting older for me. Still, seeing who you grew up to be makes me really happy, Paraware. Take care of 
yourself. Goodbye. May we meet again someday. I also have certain sentiments left unsaid. I wanted to tell her that the aurora I saw in Snezhnaya was just as beautiful as the ones in the pictures. But a shadow's memories reset at dawn. Had we delayed any longer, we wouldn't have had the time to say goodbye. Whatever regrets may linger, let them be lost to the coming of a new day. Father? <coughs> it's Linny! Hey, Linny! No, it's Linny and the others. Where are the others? What is he doing back here? Let's go check it out. Father, the bottled flames have been administered. Filial and the others have left the house. And you? What have you decided? <clears throat> Thank you for giving us that choice, Father. But we never wanted to leave the house. It's the only home we've ever known. Lynette and Fremine feel the same way. They're recuperating back at the Hotel Bouffe d'Ete. But I decided to come back and tell you where we stood. I'm sure you're well aware of the expectations I have for you. I want you to follow in my footsteps and become the next king of the house. Yet you seem to have different ideas. I must admit, I'm rather surprised by your decision to stay. There's nothing wrong with choosing to live a quiet life. Leading this organization is a heavy responsibility. One not so easily carried by someone forced onto the throne. I just... never understood what you saw in me. What made you believe I was deserving of that throne. You're brave, talented, and, most importantly, you cherish your family. You would do anything to protect them, even if it costs you your life. <laughs> Speaking up back there was so brave of you, Linny. It's all thanks to you that we were able to convince Father to back down. You're a hero, Linny. Hero? Father is the real hero. Had father gone all out during the duel, there's no way I would have walked away with my life. She must have had it all planned from the beginning, from the very moment she suggested a duel. Mm -hmm. I'm not deserving of that title. I'm not strong enough or smart enough. You're wrong. In my opinion, all you need to be deserving of the throne is conviction and the necessary strength to act on it. We may have different ideas of what it means to be a family, but you can hardly be said to lack conviction. What you truly lack is strength. For someone of your talent, though, that's something that will come with time. Even without that strength, you still chose to face me in a duel, even though the odds were stacked against you. That capacity to honor your convictions is what I truly see in you. Father. No one knows what the future holds, what tragedy or triumph may be in store. Being at the head of this organization requires the strength of will to face whatever comes. Caution will only hold you back. If reaching a certain standard were required to go after what you want, I would never have succeeded in killing my predecessor. Back then, there was still a considerable gap between our abilities. 
Strength may decide the ultimate victor, but those who let a lack of strength dictate their decisions or undermine their convictions will never be worthy of the throne. I understand, Father. Thank you. Children must grow up to surpass their parents. Only then can a family continue to flourish. The road ahead is not an easy one, so I'll ask you one last time. Are you certain you want to stay? You've done so much for me, Father, and that kindness must be repaid. Plus, with Project Stuja at hand, there are I many about dangers that. ahead, and I, for one, don't intend to back down. What is this project? Protecting my family at all costs. That's my conviction. Then you're welcome to stay. As for Project Stuja, you need not be too concerned. If those cowardly businessmen and heartless dignitaries try to take us down, I'm prepared to teach them a lesson. Having members who longed for the light was our organization's last weakness. With those members no longer among our ranks, the House of the Hearth is like a spider hiding in the shadows. We need only wait for our prey to come to us. At present, our imperative is to use their plan to our advantage. In doing so, a crimson moon shall rise amid the frigid blizzards of winter. No demonstration of loyalty shall go unrewarded, and no sacrifice shall be in vain. As for the two of you, whether we meet again as friend or foe, I'll remember the camaraderie we shared in this moment. Those are nice words. No matter how arduous the journey ahead, I hope we both reach our desired destination. Wait until two days later. Okay. What's the achievement that I got? Huh? Oh, Challenger City. Unleash four Scarlet's Night Tides in a single battle against the Knave. Okay. Apparently I did that. I don't know what that was, but I did that. You, you. Exactly two days Didn't later. Did you say that Lynette and Fremine were recovering at the Hotel Bouffe de Thé? Oh, Paimon wonders how they're doing. Maybe we should go check on them. Let's go check on them. Hotel do I don't know. Whatever the, the, the name was. Lynette? Fremine? How are you feeling? Much better. Whew, what a relief! Indeed. What about you? Are you feeling alright? I don't think I had any problem. I still want to know what that Genjutsu was or that ability was because it was amazing. Light as rain. You'd come out unscathed. Us, on the other hand, well, we've been bedridden for two days. I couldn't even turn over. Oh, and I wanted to ask is Claire V. gone? Basically. Linny and the other members have left Poisson and returned to the House of the Hearth. According to him, there haven't been any more sightings of a spirit roaming the house. We bid her farewell under a blanket of sunlight. Her wish has been fulfilled. I see. I'm glad. Father came to check up on us two days ago and told us about what happened with Crusabina and Claire V. Oh, okay. Actually, I... I've met Crusabina before. What? You did? Wait, what? You've met the former knave? How? Crusabina died a year after Claire V. It was during the year between their deaths that I joined the House of the Hearth. Oh, okay. Crusabina had an extremely cruel and radical way of doing things. While she was alive, the atmosphere in the house was suffocating. When I joined, though, the experiment she valued so much had already come to an end, and all the people involved, dead and injured alike, were gone. Crucibina never talked about the past with us newcomers. A couple of months after I joined, Father killed Crucibina and burned all her files. With that, the names of all the people subjected to her experiments, Claire V included. Oh, so that's why. To the flames. They didn't know. Along with the painful memories they represented. Father took in Lenny and me a couple months after that, 
But she never mentioned anything about Crusabina or Clarvy. Hmm. It really seems like something she was planning to keep to herself. I mean, yeah. The last time you talked to her, did she mention why she kept it a secret for so long? Oh yeah, good question. She said she didn't want us to be affected by the darkness of the past. Yeah, it makes she sense. She was worried we'd develop a false sense of gratitude towards her if we knew about it. Yeah. She the foundation plans and everything. Free of any corrupting influence. Whatever happened in the past, it has nothing to do with who we are now. Yep, the past is the past. The end. But I still thanked her for everything. It was only after hearing about what Crucibina did that I finally realized how insignificant our lives could have been. The members of the house meant nothing to her. To say that she valued them in any way, even just as a tool, would probably be giving her too much credit. Yeah. If father hadn't taken over the house of the hearth, I probably would have already... She saved you in the end. Father rarely brings up the fact that she saved us. She doesn't believe that being indebted to her should be what ties us together. But even if we didn't owe her anything, we would still choose to stay. Because this is our home. We may have arguments or times when we feel wronged. Some people may even choose to leave. But as long as father is here, we will always have a home. Whether the path before us is bathed in sunlight or shrouded in shadow, we'll follow father wherever she chooses to go. So I wanted to say thank you for helping us make it through this crisis. Without your help, we could have lost a lot more along the way. Oh, we didn't do anything, really. Well, yeah, just invite us back as guests and we'll call it even. Of course. You're welcome anytime. Are Filio and Nantoy okay? I actually saw them at a cafe this morning. They didn't recognize me. From what I could tell, they were drinking coffee and talking about one of the operas that started running recently. Okay. They seemed happy. If I had to take a guess, I would say they finally found the kind of life they always wished for. What a quest. What a story quest. I think this story quest is literally on my top, on, on, on my four, top four, top, top one, from all these story quests, literally. This Arlequino story, the Ignis Purgatorius, was actually one of the best. I'll rank this as number one in my, uh, in my um, story quest list. But yeah, that was it. And it was an amazing experience. Now, now no, I can uh, do this and have Arlequino on my team. Now I des now she deserves to be on the team. This looks amazing. But yeah, that was it. That was Arlequino story quest. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this quest in particular in the comments below. And let me know if you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, maybe a comment. Probably subscribe if you're not. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.